and it's perfectly okay that the thing that you end up with isn't exactly what you thought it would be. All right, everyone, you join me mid-project. I apologize for not uh, starting the video. When I started this project, I just kind of thought about it as I went through saying, hey, somebody might think this is neat. I'm also gonna apologize now for all of the traffic that you hear going by outside. It's just how things are. I've got the door open because it's warm today. Even though it's December 31st, it's like 75 or something ridiculous and extremely humid also. So uh, yeah, it is what it is. So what I'm doing is uh, I am building a little rack for my detailing brushes. And let me show you real quick what I'm talking about. So I have all of these things, wheel brushes, exterior engine bay kind of brushes, uh, seats and stuff, and then like the really nice, like, mm, so soft, um, for doing like screens and dashboards and stuff so it doesn't get scratched. Um, and I just don't have a good way to keep them, like keep them upright, and I thought about getting like, one of the little makeup cups or something to set them in and then I just don't want to do that. I've got enough junk here in the garage. I should be able to make something and I want something that fits a little bit better and maybe I can put up on the wall. So my plan is to use this two inch PVC pipe. I have marked out where my studs are on the wall and I'm going to, I'm going to mount this to the wall and I'm going to put holes in kind of at an angle so that the brushes can sit in sort of that way. So they stay in nice uh, and they have a way to, to kind of air out and stay open. And, uh, and I'll put in a few drain holes along the bottom. And then before I mount this on the wall, I'll paint it uh, black or red or something like that. And so join me. So I stopped the time-lapse real quick just to show you. Um, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm using my big half inch bit here on this side of it, and then I'll use a smaller on the back end of the hole so the screw can go through, but I want a nice big opening to put my screwdriver through uh, when I'm putting this into the wall. So I don't know how well that showed up, but I, uh, I made the mistake of jumping directly from my little tiny pilot hole bit to my half inch. And on this one, it caught the, uh, the PVC pipe and actually tripped up my ad admittedly very old Ryobi drill. Um, so I'm gonna grab a razor blade and kind of carve that hole out. back one a little bit easier on ourselves life doesn't need to be difficult we make it that way uh, it's not uh, super important that these holes are precise directly across from each other. Most of the work I do is an eyeball scale. So if that bothers you, I apologize. Why did I do that? I need those bits for the rest of the holes. Come on, Adam. All right, so let's see what we have here. I didn't even measure this pipe, I just held it up and it was like, oh great, it's pretty much the right length. Um, it's not cut very straight, but it's basically 25 inches. 
And so the brush, the biggest brush, the base that I have, here, why am I using a tape measure? When I can use an incredibly accurate Harbor Freight caliper. Zero point six six. All of that works. All right, so the fattest brush, zero point six six inches across. And so I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I have six in use at any given time. Um, so let's just see what we can do with that. I might end up cutting this thing down, but let's start with six across here and see how that does for us. All right, so here we go. I know I said I was gonna do six, but I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I ended up doing nine in there. Um, just because, just because. So uh, we'll see how everything lines up. I got a couple that are uh, three quarters that are big enough for that fat brush. And the rest I did with uh, five eighths, just cause I feel like they hold these uh, a little bit better and I like that they go in they come in and out very easy and I like that they'll kind of just hang right there if I really wanted to I could come back I could also do some across the top but then I got to go all the way through I guess I don't but I don't know I mean I I kind of like that just mount it there grab it the table that they're underneath is is all metal anyway and it's it's made to get wet so I'm not really worried about it dripping on anything. So now, oh, I have one more to drill. You know what? Just for fun, let's do them across the top, too, just, uh, just so that we have more options. All right, that's how it goes. Sometimes when we're building things, we just start building one thing and we completely change the plan or I guess we didn't even really have much of a plan, so that's what happens. Why is my head? How about that? So I'm going to get some, uh, get some sandpaper and uh, kind of smooth this out a little bit, and then we'll go check it over on the bench to see how it looks. All right, so got this ready to be test fit up. Just need to find some screws here. Three inch drywall or overkill. So Ooh, miscellaneous drywall. Two of these guys right here. Put this back of oh, this Harbor Freight. We'll talk about this at another show. All right, I've got you in a very interesting position here. Uh, let's hope you can see everything you need to see. 
All right, I've got it test fitted, test mounted up there. All right, well, as I'm sure most of you know or could have guessed, it didn't really work out the way I had it in my head. Uh, when I got this mounted up on the wall for the test mount, it turns out really what I needed for holes was halfway in between these and these. Um, but I have an idea. I mean, worst case scenario, I just get another piece of pipe. I have plenty more up in the supply storage. Um, but I think I have an idea that I can salvage this. So I'm not going to do a video on the build process anymore. I'm going to go ahead and cut. We're going to come back to when I have my idea completely done. You can see I went ahead and painted the whole thing in black. And then I gave it a dusting in matte black and just as it was drying I gave it a brush with a uh, stiff bristle nylon brush and it kind of gives it this uh, sort of aluminized striations brushed finish on there it just sort of cleans it up from just standard spray paint and I'm pretty happy with it you know it has kind of a, a gun barrel heat shield exhaust heat shield kind of thing going on uh, it holds all of my brushes they can sit in there uh, if they need to they can sit at that 45 degree angle and and drip off you know if they're super wet if I want to I have options and that's really all it is it's just giving me options and places to keep things to keep them off of this counter this counter is a mess it needs to be cleaned up please don't judge me for it but lots of times this is how a workbench gets and so I need a place to put those brushes and keep them safe and keep them clean and this works and like I said it was totally free it's all from stuff that I had up in my storage up there um, I have paint in the paint locker over there and if I don't love it or I want to change it I can just make a new one or I can do something different don't be afraid to experiment So, as you can see, I'm in a different shirt. It is quite early the next morning. Um, I finished things up yesterday, and uh, I just didn't do a bunch of video while I was doing it. I spent uh, a lot of time sort of figuring out what I wanted to do, probably too much time, and I had some other things that I needed to take care of as well. Um, the big takeaway from this is that... Uh, it's okay not to have a full plan of what you want to do. Sometimes it, it can be a little frustrating, but it's also a lot of fun to just come up with an idea in your brain and, you know, and maybe you kind of sketch it out a little bit or maybe you kind of think through it a little bit more, but uh, it's, it's perfectly okay to start a small project, an inexpensive project, without a full plan in mind and lots of times that's kind of just how you figure things out is is prototyping and testing and, and things like that and that's really what I did I had this you know goofy little idea I needed some place to keep my brushes uh, I could have very easily just purchased a little cup uh, a little makeup cup or, or stolen a plastic one from the kitchen or something like that to keep them in but I wanted something a little bit different I wanted something to sort of keep them maybe a little more organized and uh, and I accomplished that and it doesn't look exactly like I thought it would. It certainly is, is a little different than what I originally had in my brain, but I, it works and I think it's neat. And I kind of learned a, a little bit more about, uh, you know, using the tools that I have and you know, how to how to work with different materials uh, a little bit better because it's always a little bit different. It's, it's very humid. Uh, this week so you know painting in humidity is different than painting when it's dry and so I'm I'm happy with it I like how it turned out and uh, you know like I said if I get tired of it a little bit later then all I have to do is make another one uh, it's two inch PVC pipe and some spray paint and, and a little bit of my time and 
and I'm perfectly okay with this not being the final product. So I appreciate you sticking around for it. Um, you know, th this was not a how to make a brush holder video. Um, it's sort of just like what happened as I attempted to make a brush holder video. Um, if anything, it's maybe more of a how to just experiment with little ideas that you have. And like I said, it, it's 100% it's okay to start a project without a perfect final picture in mind so long as it's uh, you know, low risk and low investment. Uh, and it's perfectly okay that the thing that you end up with isn't exactly what you thought it would be. So hopefully that helps you. I really appreciate you watching this and uh, I look forward to the next thing that we do.